Good morning, Mary Claire. Hi. How are you today? Uh, I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, I'm just looking out into a very rainy garden at the moment, so a bit yeah. of a shame, but oh well. A good day to be sitting at your desk. <laughs> well, exactly, exactly. Lots of work done on a rainy day. OK, so as you know, I'm chatting to people about the conference and I wanted to invite you along to talk to you because you are one of our uh, early careers researchers in the field. And um, so I guess I've got two questions. The first question is, uh, what are you up to in terms of your research uh, on pluralism? Um, well, what am I up to? I am doing a PhD in, basically I'm developing an adherence skill for pluralistic therapy. So there isn't one at the moment that's validated and it's just to kind of um, move forward research with pluralistic therapy because it's still obviously a very, a very young form of therapy that is still, um, needs to be like you know tested just like every other form of therapy as well and um, developing this adherence skill is hopefully going to help people be able to do that and you know I don't yeah. know want some more information or is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> I have, yeah I guess I guess what the, the question that often gets posed is how do you do an adherence scale for something that's so incredibly flexible in practice so, so yes. pluralistic therapists doing loads and loads of different stuff so uh, and, and I know it's under development, but how are you how are you thinking about it at the moment? Yeah, that's exactly. I mean, if anyone has any answers to that, you know, like answers on a postcard, please kind of <laughs> that would be great. Um, but just now I'm talking to people, you know, talking to act what actual therapists are doing, you know, asking them because obviously you get the books you get the textbooks you'll be like this is what we say when we think pluralistic therapy is and then people this happens with every type of therapy you know people they learn how to do it they train in it and then they move off and they do it on their own and I'm just kind of looking to see like what's changed like what are people thinking this one doesn't work in practice for example you know this bit obviously does work in practice but this bit just doesn't it jars with clients and things like that and um, it's just about trying to get this idea of flexibility into the adherence scale itself. So you've got things like you could go with principles, you could go with, um, you know, values or something like that, or you could go with kind of a more traditional based one. But that is still up for grabs. What's going to happen with, with the interviews, you know, what people are going to say and and how that's going to develop it is still obviously yeah in development, as you say. Uh, uh, brilliant. And I think one of the other things that you're trying to do, which is is quite uncommon in, in developing things like adherence scales, is you're actually hoping to talk to therapists and clients and, and you know, a mm. range of folk. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So instead of like the traditional adherence scale, you've just got an observer, some person who's just who knows about the therapy just watching a session of two strangers and just saying like yes this therapist did this thing you know in 10 minutes of a session really whereas you know which and, and lots of other studies have shown that that isn't that's only like one part of the picture really you know there's lots of things that could be done in a relationship like that like if I was talking to you I think we would maybe have more of an understanding that if somebody who are from the outside would see and be like oh well they didn't say that specifically but then they'd be like well but they did actually you know communicate that in some other way and so there's this idea about having an adherence scale that asks the client and asks the therapist like did you do this in the session or did my did your therapist do this in the session um, and it just gets a more well-rounded picture and it just lets everybody have a say instead of it just being the kind of the independent observer who's never actually independent because nobody ever actually is independent you know yeah. so it's really so it re it's it's kind of it's that idea of pluralistic a pluralistic approach to pluralistic adherence <laughs> yes exactly you like that <laughs> pluralism it just <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it makes it 
more complicated. Um, okay, uh, that's really uh, it's really interesting, and um, obviously your your research is is kind of evolving and growing uh, as we go along. But it might be that that there are some people who are interested in talking to you who are listening to this video. So sure. I just I just put that there. Um, <laughs> you also uh, run our pluralism research groups at the moment. I was wondering if you could yeah tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Yeah. Um, so. I, I kind of run two at the moment, actually. Um, there was one that I kind of fell into <laughs> somehow, um, but that is with, um, it, it's kind of more of a research steering group. So it's kind of asking quite a lot of questions about like, what is pluralistic um, research? You know, how how does that look in practice? What, what would that actually be like? What are the philosophical um, stances behind it? You know, what does that mean? Um, and then there's more a kind of a, a practical one where, you know, for people who are doing research or practitioners who don't get a chance to do research because they're not affiliated with university, but they just like it and they want to talk about it or they want to be more involved. Um, yeah, I just kind of, uh, I, I run both <laughs> just once a month and I just, you know, people are welcome to come along and, and, and talk about it, you know, because there's a, a bit of a, a lack of that sometimes I think I think practitioners might be a little bit like um not sure about it or kind of you know not sure how to put it into their practice and things like that and I think the idea about pluralism is it is trying to be more welcoming and you are trying to get people involved who might not traditionally be involved and but might want to be you know there's but they just don't know how to get into that you know unless you are at university it's, there it is you know yeah and I know you're going to be talking a little bit more about that at the workshop, right? Mm, yeah, um, we're all the the research kind of steering group, I guess, is having a we're doing a workshop about what is pluralistic research, what's pluralistic inquiry. And um, yeah, the research group have been so welcoming to me as a new researcher. They really have because um, you know, these are people who, you know, they've made a name for themselves and they're, you know, they're really, but they're so welcoming and, and encouraging, which is really great. And it's really different to a lot of other um, research groups that I've maybe been involved in in the past. It's very, it, it feels a very safe environment. You know, people can kind of, you know, I can say, like, I don't know what that means, <laughs> you know, like, and that is OK. You know, people won't think any less of me. And that is something that is very difficult in a lot of other research areas and, and other universities and stuff. I've struggled with that a bit, definitely. Oh, well, that's really good to hear. And Marika, thank you for talking to me this morning. Yeah, and I will see you. You. I'll see you soon. Yeah. <laughs> Have a good day. I hope it stops raining. Thank you. <laughs>